when you first start learning how to fly, one of the first things you're going to notice is that you use your feet to steer the airplane when you're taxiing on the ground. But what should you do with the yoke when you're out taxiing around? If you don't hold the controls in the correct spot and the wind is really strong, it is possible for the wind to flip you over on your nose or on your back or on your side and no one wants that. So let's spend a few minutes and talk about what you should do with the yoke when you're taxiing in strong winds. I'm gonna be honest, if the winds are super light and I'm flying a tricycle gear aircraft, I like to just hold the yoke in a neutral position. But if the winds are really strong, then this is something you wanna know how to do. Here's the problem. The wings of your airplane are designed to fly. In other words, they're specifically designed to pick up the weight of your airplane. And they don't care if you're ready to fly or not. So if you have enough relative wind that acts on one of these wings, it will pick up that wing and flip you over in a heartbeat. So when it's windy, you need to be ready to kill that lift that could flip you over. Keep in mind, a headwind is a problem because the wings can individually create enough lift to flip you over. But if you have a wind coming from behind you, that can be a problem too because that wind can actually get underneath one of the wings and pick it up very similar to the way we get a kite to fly. Because of this, a quartering tailwind is just as likely to flip you over. Now, the reason I'm telling you all this is because the way we handle a quartering headwind is actually different than the way we handle a quartering tailwind. When we have a quartering headwind, we're trying to kill the lift on the wing that's creating more lift. But when we have a quartering tailwind, we want to reduce the amount of wind going under that upwind wing so it doesn't get picked up like a kite. Okay, but how do we do that and which controls do we use? When taxing in strong winds, we have two tools that we can use to keep ourselves from getting flipped over. The ailerons and the elevator. And both of these are operated by using either a yoke or a stick in the cockpit. Now the good thing about the ailerons is that because they're tied together, the decision making process is really simple. When one aileron is up, the other one is down and vice versa. So all you have to do is think about that upwind wing. For example, let's say we have a quartering headwind. What do we want to do with the yoke in this case? Well, with a quartering headwind, we're concerned about this upwind wing getting picked up, aren't we? So we need to kill the lift on this wing. How many of you guys remember how an airplane turns? If you don't, here's a quick refresher. When we lower an aileron, that wing creates more lift, and the aileron on the opposite side comes up, which kills the lift on that side. This in turn rolls the airplane. So if we have a quartering headwind from the right, do we want more or less lift on that wing? We want less lift, don't we? So in this case, we want to raise that aileron to kill the lift on that side. I know, easier said than done, right? Which way do we hold the yoke? I got a little trick for you guys. Position your hands on the yoke and then stick up your thumbs. Now remember, thumbs up, ailerons up. Whichever way our thumbs are pointing, that's the aileron that's coming up, and that's the side that we're killing the lift on. You wouldn't want to get too close to this guy. Now I want you to remember this dumb little joke for two reasons. First, it'll help you remember what to do with those ailerons in a quartering headwind when you're taxiing around on the ground. But this is also the same method you're going to be using to control the airplane during crosswind landings as well. If the wind is pushing me left, I need to point my thumbs into the wind to kill that extra lift on the right side. Your thumb is a killer, remember that. But the ailerons aren't the only thing we need to consider. We also need to do something with the elevator as well. Let's say we still have a quartering headwind, and it's from the left this time. We know that we need to point our thumbs into the wind, which means our left aileron should be up, killing that lift. But what should we do with the elevator? Well, that depends on what kind of airplane you're flying. If you're flying an airplane with conventional gear, in other words a tail dragger like this older Taylor craft, you need to hold the yoke back to keep the tail pinned to the ground. By holding the yoke back, this raises the elevator which keeps the tail from popping up on you. If you don't do this, any wind going over that tail can cause it to raise up and that can actually take away your ability to steer with the tail wheel because your tail is actually flying instead of being on the ground. But on airplanes with tricycle gear like a Cessna 172 or a Piper Cherokee, you want to hold the yoke in a neutral position. And that's because airplanes like this are designed so that their nose is a little heavier than the tail. This keeps the airplane flat on the ground during the takeoff roll, which makes it easier to steer when you're taxiing around. That's why nose wheel aircraft have become popular trainers. Taxiing can be a little bit tricky in tail draggers when you're first learning to fly one of those guys. Ask me how I know. Oh, stop, 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 kill the engine. Why is it? Ah, I tried. All right. <laughs> but what if we 
have a quartering tailwind, how should we hold the yoke in that case? As we mentioned earlier, a quartering tailwind has the ability to pick up your wing because of the wind that gets underneath that upwind wing. So to eliminate wind under the wing, we've got to block it. We already know thumbs up ailerons up, so if we point our thumbs away from a tailwind, this will drop that upwind aileron which will reduce the wind going under the wing. But there's one other thing that we need to do with a quartering tailwind. And for a tailwind, it doesn't matter if you're flying a tail dragger or a trike. In both cases, you want to hold the yoke forward. This keeps the elevator down, which keeps the wind from flowing under the tail and picking it up. Once again, you'll lose steering if this happens in a tail dragger. I'm sure it's not fun in a trike either unless you like riding a unicycle gear aircraft right before you get flipped over on your nose. And speaking of that, the FAA wants you to know that if you're flying a high wing aircraft like a Cessna 172 or a BC-12D Taylor craft, it is most critical that these controls are right when you're taxing in a quartering tailwind. And that's because those wings are way up there and they're really prone to being turned into a kite. <laughs> Someone messed up, didn't they? But that doesn't mean you have to. Instead of spending a thousand dollars on a headset that you don't know for sure you're gonna like, try this P1 from Core Aviation. You won't mess up, and if you decide you don't like it, you can just give it to your passengers later on. But I guarantee you, this is an awesome quality headset and you're gonna love it. Let's get back to the training. Now before I leave you today, I wanna go over a few different ways that the FAA could ask you about this on the written exam. Because even though you know how to do it now, they're gonna try to trip you up with stupid looking questions, pictures, or diagrams. Let's say we have a right quartering headwind like you see here. How should we position the controls when we're taxiing in a tricycle gear aircraft? Well, we know that we have a headwind, so we need to kill the lift on that upwind wing. So point your thumbs into the wind to raise that upwind aileron. Now, what do we do with the elevator? Well, we're in a trike, so neutral elevator is the best in that case. What if this was a tail dragger? The ailerons would stay the same, but we'd need to pin the tail, wouldn't we? What about a left quartering headwind? Now what? That's right, kill that lift with your thumbs and neutralize the elevator on a trike. But what's gonna happen if you keep the elevator neutral and a tail dragger in this situation? Yeah, the tail could start flying before you're ready, couldn't it? Next, we have a quartering tailwind from the left. Now what do we do? Well, we wanna lower that upwind aileron, don't we? That's going to keep that wind from moving underneath that upwind wing. So thumbs up, ailerons up. Let's point our yoke over to the right to drop that upwind aileron. And what do we do with that elevator? Yep, we want to push it full forward on all airplanes, don't we? Some people will tell you that you want to dive away from a quartering tailwind, and that's a really good memory aid if you're into those. So what do you think we should do if we have a quartering tailwind from the right and you're in a tail dragger then? Yep, we want to dive away from that wind with the ailerons and push that yoke all the way forward. And once again, an aircraft with tricycle gear is the same. We want to dive away with the yoke all the way forward to keep us from getting flipped over onto our nose. And now you know how to hold the yoke or the stick when you're out taxing in strong winds. And if you've watched all my other videos and this one, you are now ready to take the FAA written exam. But before you can go do that, the FAA wants to make sure that you're ready to take the test. So because of that, you've got to have an endorsement from a certified flight instructor or a ground instructor. And as of today, I'm releasing what might be the cheapest way to get that endorsement. If you'll go to freepilottraining.net, you'll find my premium private pilot ground course for only 50 bucks. And that course uses my videos along with quizzes and tests to make sure that you're ready for that written test. And when you are ready, I'm going to send you an email with that written endorsement. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.